The Exorcism is a 2024 American horror movie which stars Russell Crowe as Anthony Miller, a washed up actor, kind of like Russell Crowe himself. And we can't really deny Russell Crowe has been turning out all these bad movies for a paycheck recently. Anyway, Russell Crowe plays this drunk actor who's going to make a comeback in a new movie called Georgetown Project, which is supposed to be a remake of The Exorcist. Even though it's not explicitly stated, it's heavily implied to be The Exorcist. Anyway, when an actor dies, Anthony Miller is called to the test to take on the role of Father Arlington in the movie. There are other characters, his stern director, played by Adam Brody, who really wants him in the movie. There's his daughter, Lee, played by Ryan Simpkins, who's worried about him and his health, but is there to support him nonetheless. And there's another actress, played by Chloe Bailey, who also just appears in the film as a random actress. She doesn't really have that much depth to her. And I want to start off by saying the concept is not that bad. The idea of a haunted movie set is really cool, and they even address this in the trailers. And you can always tell, based on the trailer, just look at the Minecraft trailer, when a movie is going to be a stinker. I saw this movie trailer for the first and only time when I went to see The Strangers Chapter 1, and I immediately knew that something was really off with this movie. It references The Exorcist, The Omen, Poltergeist, all those movies with rumored curses due to accidents occurring or involving the actors and crew members being killed or becoming sick. And like I was saying, I think this is a really cool concept to adapt in a film. The idea of a cursed movie hasn't really been done before, at least in a while, and it's something very interesting. It really did intrigue me, and I was curious where this was going to go from there. There is this really cool opening shot where we track an actor rehearsing his lines through the house, which then when the camera pans out, we find out is actually a film set. Then there is some kind of power outage, a spark of electricity, and it appears something's going wrong. The actor is reading his lines, the power goes out, and he falls to his death. It's a very intriguing opening, and it's a great segue to show Russell Crowe getting his role as Father Arlington taking over for the actor who died. I think the idea of a cursed film set is a really great idea, as I said, but the movie just handles its concept so horribly. Firstly, one of the issues is the pacing. The movie doesn't really have a strong enough hook. Yes, I really do like the opening scene, but there's not enough that builds off of this. We get the standard kind of rapport that you wouldn't expect in an opening. We learn through dialogue that this actor, played by Russell Crowe, is drunk. The filmmakers are taking a gamble by trusting him to cast him in their film. He has a strange relationship with his daughter. He drinks a lot and thinks this role is going to change his career. It's very cliche and has been before and done before type of thing, but it does work at establishing the movie and the characters we know who they are. We know where they're coming from and we know that, you know, their background stories. But another issue and one that prevents the movie from ever really getting past all that it has to offer is it never really shows anything too much beyond what it says on the surface. It's so surface level, and if a movie can only tell you and can't show you, well, its intentions aren't going to hit as hard as a movie that can actually show you those scenes. If we actually got to see Russell Crowe being a bad father, or trying to be there for his daughter, but he just can't because he's drinking, the movie would definitely hit a lot harder. But because we don't see this, and it's only told to us, it doesn't feel as real. I think regarding the daughter character, it would be better if we had actually started the film with her committing an act of defiance to get into trouble. Instead, she just says some throwaway line to her dad about how she's been suspended and now has to stay with him. But we don't actually see what she's done. We don't actually see that she is this rebel or capable of going against her dad. It's just told to us, which doesn't hit as hard. Also, if we could see Russell Crowe's drinking troubles or the situation he puts himself in to beat this famously hard to work with actor, it would work well as opposed to just being told that he's this pretty famous actor who has a troubled past. We don't actually get to see who he is. We don't get to see that he's been in any movies or has been in anything else or has this history. We're just told it and it doesn't work or make us feel as connected to his character as opposed to if you've given us interviews with him or shown scenes of him in other movies. Maybe they shoot some fake scenes with Russell Crowe just show he's this really famous actor. And this becomes a big issue on the villain side of things. Usually in possession films, it's interesting to have a two-factor villain. You can have your main possessed character, which takes on some unseen demon, which takes control of the character we care about and tries to warp them into something evil, something they're not. And then you can also have something, maybe a secondary villain, like in Poltergeist 2, some human or someone seemingly posing as a human who wants to let this demon come and is essentially working as a servant for the main villain. You have two villains, and it makes for an interesting, intense situation. However, to be completely honest, in The Exorcism, there is no villain, at least not a villain in a conventional sense of a horror movie standard. Even for a possession movie, the villain here just is pretty terrible. 
In The Exorcist, there was a villain, Pazuzu, the main demon who possesses the little girl, Reagan. And obviously, The Exorcist is a classic movie and does so much to make you care about every character. You get tons of backstory. You get a mother-daughter relationship, which becomes crucially important when the daughter becomes possessed. You see how the mom is a working actor, but makes time for her daughter. And then when she gets possessed, it's overwhelming for her. And oddly, you have a similar situation in this movie. The character in this movie is the daughter of someone working in the film industry who watches her own father become taken over by the entity. But the, ex the Exorcist works for so many reasons because you feel the characters. It also provides an interesting hook where you get to understand where the villain of the movie is coming from and what their motivation is. And in The Exorcist, this demon is dug up and is looking for a host. Then when this little girl is playing with a Ouija board, it is summoned to her. You kind of have this chain of events which makes practical sense even with supernatural abilities. You have this girl who's becoming something she's not, but you're able to witness the evolution of the character. You know that she starts as this innocent girl who loves playing with her mother to this horrific demon that has taken over her because of how vulnerable she is. Exorcism, it's just implied that Russell Crowe has been through a lot. He's drink, he's drunk a lot. He has had tragedies with his past with his wife. So we're supposed to assume that it's easy for a demon to possess him, I guess? That's the most frustrating part. There's no reason or explanation for why any of this has happened. And the worst part is they never really go into this. There's no history to explaining that things have happened you know, on this set before. The movie just doesn't really go out of its way to build an interesting backstory for the movie. There's so much more they could have done. It makes me think, what if the movie did have a more interesting hook where we see years ago, tons of people were killed uh, and this one actor, I mean, did, like in the opening, got killed too. I do think it could be a lot more impactful. It's very much a style over substance movie. Yeah, it does look really good and honestly, all the actors are pretty committed. It just has this really basic story without any sense of dread or foreboding. I really think the dynamic between father and daughter could have been played into a lot more than it was in the movie. Also, the relationship with Ryan Simpkins' character and Chloe Bailey does feel a bit forced. They have this relationship, which isn't really bad, but it just feels so crammed into the movie, and it isn't like they unite to discover what's wrong with the set or anything. It's not like they have a relationship and it leads to anything else happening. I actually would have bought their romance, but the screenwriter should have had them more concerned on the film about the history of this film set, why it's possessed, maybe even dropping hints at the demon that has possessed actors who worked on this film before. It just feels so stupid because there's no buildup or seeds dropped earlier. That will make it feel more rewarding at the end when you learn that the actor is being taken over by this demon. It just feels really stupid because we have no idea why there is a demon on the set or what it wants. Or it just kind of told us, just told us this and we have to go with it. A big lesson to me to take away from this film would be you can get away with most things when making a movie about something not realistic or grounded per se. Look at The Sixth Sense, or The Conjuring, or The Exorcist, or even Star Wars, or The Avengers in 2012. These movies all feature things that shouldn't really happen in real life, but it finds an understandable way to explain it to the audience and combined with great writing, like a mix of horror, humor, adventure, and thrills, is able to make these events believable. It's able to take something that should never really happen or feel real and make it epic, believable, that it actually could happen that there's actually excitement around it. It doesn't feel like something you're watching to quote unquote, shut your brain off and enjoy a movie. Exorcism easily could have been a great modern horror movie, something that Neon or A24 could have distributed. Not just this dull, empty, solo studio flick. Really, it could have been so intriguing and such a great commentary on the film industry as a whole too. There haven't been that many movies that have dealt with a cursed film set in a while, and especially ones that are this really renowned. So to me, this is just a huge disappointment because it doesn't really carve a name for itself or do anything different to make itself stand out. It was just lacking in all territories with the characters, there's a little chemistry with the villain, is there's this big void, and we really have no idea what the villain wants or why they're doing this, and as a result, it feels stakeless, like there's no point in watching it. I really liked Late Night with the Devil, another movie from earlier this year that dealt with kind of a cursed set, although that was live TV set better. So let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed The Exorcist. I saw this on digital, uh, it's available to watch online now. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you at the next review.